Hi, I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. Warmer weather turns our attention outside. So this week on Today's Homeowner, we're kicking off a two-part project to turn this yard from blah to beautiful. It's too beautiful of a neighborhood to have this kind of front yard. Everybody loves to go to the beach, but when it's in your front yard, it gets old pretty quick. Now think about it when it rains and you're going from your car right inside the house. I think we have some ideas that will solve this problem for these homeowners. Billy Cavula and Brenda Martins bought this house just a few months ago and they've made some changes on the inside. Now it's time to tackle the great outdoors. We knew there were going to be cosmetic issues inside. No major problems, um, but our main pro our the main problems ended up being outside, um, especially our front yard. Apparently, the home's narrow driveway encouraged the former owners to use the lawn as a parking lot. Billy and Brenda need the parking space as well, but they want something more attractive and at least a little lawn. We've looked at everything from gravel to pavers to cementing to the boys wanted a basketball court <laughs> out there and, and instead of the dust bowl. One of the things that we really loved about this neighborhood is that it has a lot of sidewalks and therefore there's a lot of people out, people walking and it creates a kind of community and that is something we were looking for and when we found this house in this neighborhood it really um, offered that and so I'd like to be able to sit out there and, and see people out walking and and meeting different people, especially as newcomers. Um, we'd like to have people over a lot. We have two teenagers who would like to have a lot of their friends over, so that would be a space for them to be in as well. The backyard has a generously sized patio with lots of privacy, but it lacks the character and charm to make it an attractive outdoor living area. I'd like to have some flowers for some color back here too. We need color, yes. We um, could do it in pots or we could do it plants. Being new down here, I don't know what what flowers are gonna be good and what are gonna last. So for the front yard challenge, turn the beach back into a lawn and create an attractive parking solution. So you think um, putting a paver patio, a little paver driveway right in here, a little transition walking in, a little grass out here would make a difference? Oh, that'd be a big deal. Yeah, we, we would really like to keep something here to keep yeah. at least one car here. Yeah, all right, well, we can work that in. We also can um, um, grade this in such a way that uh, we can probably get some of the water to go this way okay. and some of it to go that way. Definitely have to find these sprinkler lines. Are there sprinkler lines out in here now? Shouldn't well, be. I think they're mostly in the beds. Oh, I got you, okay, um, good. Well, well, if they're out here, we'll find them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to give some new life to this tired patio in the back, we're suggesting some cleanup and concrete stain. All of this will be a, amazing anyway once we get it all all cleaned up. And we'll and, clean up all this moss. Yeah, yeah get, the, get the moss out of there. We'll also add natural wood furniture to give the area some warmth and wood lattice to break up that massive wall of green. And you know, I think here, I mean, even though this looks nice being painted, if we use some of the what we call checkerboard lattice instead of the diagonal type lattice, it'll just give it a little bit more of a finished appearance there. Oh, that's nice. And then with the chairs, that we'll have out here be you know made from the same material. It kind of looks intentional, I guess, you know, okay. from that standpoint. So it's time for us to get started. Since we're laying pavers, we've called in our good friend Andy Morton from Pavestone. He recently helped us with a patio and outdoor fireplace project that turned out to be a great success. And he's not afraid of hard work. We have a good starting point here, good level surface. Looks uh -huh. like we got some good soil to work with. Uh, this, this should be a good location. And what about how it ties in right in here? What do you think? These should come up. Yeah, definitely we need to pull these pavers out so we can get a good straight line to uh, to start on right here. Uh, and we'll want to bring the level up because I think uh, the homeowners want to redo the driveway here. Yeah. So uh -huh. we'll want to bring this up a little bit to match. But what about this, though, Andy? If, we, if we're coming in here, do we want a, a, a 90 degree turn in or do we want to try to do an apron I think an approach? apron would be good, especially the way that we make this the, the turn, natural right. turn in here. We're probably going to want that to kind of keep it on the driveway okay and then obviously we want to tie it in so we're going to probably want to make a little curve back in towards the house there yeah i think a radius on this end and inside edge 
yeah. as well. Yeah, that, sh that should good, look good. It makes it a little more, you know, instead of just a straight, square, rectangular right. uh, uh, situation. And what about the, the, the drainage? We should be able to really divert some of this water back that way, and obviously water's going that way. We could probably kind of kind of solve this yeah, little problem. Really, we're going to make the driveways kind of the high point, and mm -hmm. everything's going to slope away from there and, and turn our water the directions we need it to go in. Okay, perfect. Well, you got the marking paint. I got paint. the marking paint. Let's see if we can't go ahead and get some lines established here. While we do that, why don't you check in with Joe for this week's simple solution. Container gardening has become popular with do-it-yourselfers, and it's the practice of keeping plants in either large pots or trays, as I have here. But the challenge is when you display them, they're all typically on one level which isn't that attractive. So I thought, how can we create tiered planting system? And here's what I did. Went to the Home Center store and bought some pre-cut stair stringers. These are made for building deck stairs. And I attached them with a couple of short two by fours, one at the top, one at the bottom. And I'm just gonna set it in place against this fence. And now where the steps would ordinarily go, the treads, I'm gonna put a planter tray. In this case, I have enough for three trays. You can cut these stringers longer and store four or five, even six trays trays of plants, but here I just have three. And the weight of the trays holds the stringers in place, so you don't even have to fasten them to the fence. There you go, isn't that great? So we have three tiers, and because the system is completely portable, at the end of the growing season, just break everything down and put it in the shed. Billy and Brenda's front yard was a barren mess of dirt and sand. We've started work to replace it with a new lawn and a paver driveway. In the short term, though, it's going to be pretty dirty. We're tilling up the whole yard to prepare for sod, and we have to shovel out the driveway area to prepare for the pavers. Probably need to take this down four inches because we actually want to raise the level up. Our pavers are two and three eighths inches thick. Okay. So if we have base sitting right at this level, that two and three eighths thick paver is going to add just about now the right amount. Two and three eighths going to be enough for parking on? Exactly. Yeah, sixty millimeter. That's what you want for uh, for driveway pavers. All right. That base that Andy is talking about is the crushed limestone, which will act as the foundation for our pavers. In this case, that means about five cubic yards of it. Put it back on. Put it back on. This tiller does a great job of churning up the dirt, but it's a chore letting it drag you all over the yard. So of course, I jump in to do my share. I think um, I could show him a few things right now, but um, he'll get the hang of it in a few years. Apparently, some people have too much time on their hands. All right, here we go. We need to get busy shoveling. Good dirt in this beach. I thought it was just sand. <laughs> While Andy, Billy, and I get the dirt moving, Alan is around back with Brenda getting the patio prepped for stain. We want to clean that patio well. Okay. But when you're talking about a really good degrease or a cleaner, an etcher like this, you, you may or you may not need it full strength. Okay. So we're going to test that first. What I'm going to do is one to one to one. I've got about a quarter, quarter or so of water, and I've got a quart of this. So what we want to do is we're just going to pour a little bit of this out, and we're just going to let that sit for a little bit. What's nice about this is that we don't have to break out the pressure washer. Oh, okay. This actually is going to do the cleaning for us. Okay. See how it's bubbling? Mm -hmm. that's, that's that's exactly what we want right there. That's perfect right there. Okay. All right. So I think we're ready to clean the patio. Okay, let's All go. Right. Let's start with that square right there. Okay. So we we'll just pour it on and let it sit for about a minute. Well, let's just let that sit for a little bit. Okay. This is where we talk about the weather. While those two are watching the Quick Creek formula do its work. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful weather. <laughs> some of us are still breaking a sweat. Sort of. Once the etcher has done its job, there's a little scrubbing to be done before they rinse the surface to stop the etching process and wash away the dirt. In the front yard, the excavation is done and Alan's rejoined us to get everything ready to lay down the base material. 
We have all of the dirt out of there. Alan's just now finishing up all of the plate compacting in order to really pack the ground. And then we're moving in this crushed limestone. And this is so perfect to pack it out and have a really good tight foundation. It also allows when you have a heavy rain for water to penetrate through the pavers and right on into the ground, a big advantage of being able to use pavers. Now, we'll move just about all of this and then we'll pack all of it down and we'll be installing pavers first thing in the morning. Getting the base material into the space is only part of the job. Once it's there, it has to be raked to the right depth and screeded out to a flat level surface. We always talk about how a lot of the things that maybe, you know, re we repair things and we never get things done around our house. Right. Well, uh, that's not the case with Andy here. I want you to look at this. <laughs> Does this look familiar to you? Oh! I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> so, so the question is, how long did it take you to sneak all these bricks away from, from work to get them home? I got it one block at a time. <laughs> well, really? And it didn't cost wow, me a dime. Oh, man. By the time the crushed limestone is smooth and level, it's late in the day. So our last chore is running the plate compactor over the base to firmly pack it in. Got it all packed, huh? That's it. And this is going to look fantastic. And so you just take the different ones and just randomly put them in when you put them down. Exactly. We're going to use four different size pavers and uh, mix them all up, random pattern. Uh, you know, things are looking good. I think we're right where we wanted to be, end of day one, compacted, ready to start screeding sand, land pavers in the morning. Perfect, perfect. Well, we're going to get the homeowners involved in that, right? Definitely. <laughs> it should be a great day tomorrow. You know, I love it when I got that much power in my hands. Take a look at this string trimmer by Ego. And when I talk about power, look how much power I got. I got a 56 volt lithium ion battery that's driving this bad boy. But look, this battery is easy to pop off. It's very lightweight. But I'm telling you what, with this battery, you get just about as much power in the string trimmer as you would with a gas operated string trimmer. It's very balanced, which makes it very easy to use so you don't get fatigued. You've got about a 12 inch swath as you are cutting, so it uh, speeds up the process. But I have to say, I like this slow start. You press the safety and when you turn it on, it doesn't jolt right on, it's a slow start up. See that? And I'll tell you what, with that much power, I can't believe how quiet it is. It's too beautiful of a neighborhood to have this kind of front yard. <laughs> We're in the middle of a yard makeover for homeowners Billy and Brenda that will revamp both their front and backyards. By the end of day one, we were making great strides. And now the fun part, putting sand in. That's right, we're ready to start dumping sand. So what we're gonna end up with is about a one inch bed of sand. So just kind of try to string it out along here. The better we string it out, the less we have to drag the sand. The purpose of the paver sand is to give us that perfect final grading, take out any little dips and humps. Usually when I spread sand like this, I like to have one in each hand, one bag in each hand. That's the efficient way to do it. And one under my arm like mm -hmm. this. We might need a demonstration of that technique. <laughs> Fortunately, we had enough help that I never had to give that demonstration and the sand went down pretty quickly. Well, Billy, I'll tell you what they're doing is putting four different sizes of these things together to create the pattern for the driveway. I'm glad I'm not designing that pattern. I know, I know. Thank goodness we got Andy to, to take care of that. And uh, I know you have to run off and do a little cooking for a fundraiser for the college, huh? Yes, every year we do a, um, a fundraiser for our international service immersion program, a jambalaya luncheon. And um, today's a day, unfortunately, and I got I to gotta head back to school. So I would just assume that we'll probably be eating pretty good around here around lunchtime, uh, huh? We'll have some jambalaya from a chef that we bring in from uh, Baton Rouge every year. Is that right? Yes, sir. That sounds perfect. Okay, okay. that'll make us work even harder. <laughs> While Billy is serving up spicy food at school, back at the house, Brenda and Alan are about to transform that patio they cleaned yesterday with a spicy color. Would you like to roll or brush? Um, I will brush. Already? Just like your paint, dip it, brush it off. Okay, just start Take on it. the edge? On the edge. Mm -hmm. okay. What I like about a stain as opposed to a paint is that stain is that's going to absorb into those pores and help seal it off. Okay. And once it's dried up, then we're going to come up with another sealer on top of that and really protect it. We won't want to leave the back porch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. The color Brenda chose from the Quickrete palette was terracotta, and it seems to be doing a good job hiding the reddish stains that were already in the concrete. I think it looks great. I, I can see those Adirondack chairs on this right now. And it's easy for us to it do. It is. It is very easy. 
I'm back, guys. All right, hey, hey, here you go. Hey, let me, I'll give you my spot. All right. I got gloves for you, and Annie's gonna tell you everything you need to know about pavers in about 10 seconds. Yes, go. sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Billy, here's what we've got. We've got a string line here parallel to the house. We're gonna lay our border course off that. So you can go ahead and grab a stone there. We've got a few going already. And what you're doing is kind of a click and drop here. You're just gonna put those stones, touch them together, and then drop it right down into the sand, just like that. No. Uh, pounding in or anything, just keep laying them. So this is like the uh, apprentice. This is like entry level pavers when you're doing the border. Exactly. Well, you know, it's 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 important too. You know, because you don't start square, you 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 don't end up square. So. All right. Yeah, that's looking right. too much pressure. That's looking good. Yeah, it, it's all riding on you here right, right now. So. If laying the border is a discipline chore, then the pavers in the field are a free for all. Just random. That's all we're doing. Just random. While Billy and I are trying to get in touch with our inner randomness, I'm going to need a saw. The patio stain has dried, and Alan is about to add one more layer of protection. So we're going to take this one step further, really protect it, by putting on a high gloss sealer. You've actually got two different types you can put on. You've got a natural and the high gloss, which is a wet look. It makes it look like it's uh, freshly done, like it's soaking wet, but it's not. It protects against all the elements, protects against dirt, debris, makes this last a long time. You can see it goes on white. It's going to dry clear with that wet look on it. This is going to last for years to come. Once the center of the paper drive is filled in, we can start marking the radius to be cut using this high-tech device called a garden hose. This, We'll just take the Sharpie go along here and put a mark on it, and we'll be able to ready, to ready to cut that with concrete saw. Alrighty, get your sharpie. While we're waiting for the concrete saw to arrive from the rental center, we begin trenching along the straight sections that already have the border in place. That way we can begin putting in the concrete curb that retains the pavers. We're using the uh, Quickcrete fast set concrete, which works well for this because it has a setup time about 30 45 minutes. Yeah, that's perfect. So we can put this in here, it'll set up quickly for us, and then we can get our uh, sand swept and get our, our plate compactor on top of our pavers again. Man, don't have of, to wait around. A lot of steps, huh, Billy? That's for sure. <laughs> when the saw arrives, Andy makes pretty quick work of the cuts. Once the curves are cut and the waste piece is removed, we can add the border course and we're ready for the dressing sand to go on top. Spreading it with a broom helps the sand work down into the joints between the pavers, but the last pass with the plate compactor really tightens those seams up. With just two days done, we've made some remarkable progress. Susan wants to know, what's a safe way to remove weeds from a gravel walk or driveway? I remember years ago, I used to have an office with a large gravel parking lot, and I battled those grasses and weeds all the time that would pop up right through that gravel no matter what I did. Now, I tried to spray on a lot of the weed and grass killers, and they would work okay for a while, but I found something that worked just as good, and it was even cheaper, just regular table salt. Now, I would buy it in the large 40-pound bags, and it worked so well, very easy to use. Then I found something that was even cheaper, and that's boiling water. You can take your tea kettle and just pour it directly on any of the weeds or grasses that you may have, and it just basically cooks them right in place, kills them quicker than just about anything else. Now, just like any weed killers, you want to make sure you're only applying the salt or the hot water right where you want to kill it, not over on your nice grass. But when you really want to get rid of them, if you have just a few weeds, just simply pull them out by the roots. In just two days, we've tilled up Billy and Brenda's entire yard, cleaned and stained their patio, moved tons of soil, crushed limestone, and sand, and laid an awesome new paver driveway. So Andy, you think this will be dry enough in the morning for us to put the sealer on? Absolutely, shouldn't be a problem at all. And as a matter of fact, you know, the look you're getting here with this wet look, that's what you're gonna, that sealer's gonna do for you. Man, really bring looks, out the color. That looks fantastic. Well, you can see that you can do an awful lot of work in two days on a yard renovation like this, especially if you have a little extra help here and there. But we've been able to get all of the driveway completely finished. And as we talked about, we'll be putting the sealer on tomorrow to really bring it to life. We'll also be building these four great Adirondack chairs to create a nice little outdoor outdoor living area on the freshly stained patio out back. We'll also be planting grass and doing a lot of other things that may be perfect for 
your yard. We'll be doing all of that on next week's show. I hope you'll join us right here on today's homeowner. I'm Danny Lipford. Yeah, this looks great. <laughs> Who's the amateur that left their phone on? <laughs> this is Alan. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.